All right, some breaking news, and it's not good news, folks. A New York City police officer wounded in an ambush late last week has died this afternoon. Officer Wilbert Mora and his partner were responding to a domestic call when the suspect burst out of a back bedroom of a Harlem apartment and began shooting. Mora was wounded at the time. His partner, Jason Rivera, was also shot and died later that night. The suspect, a career criminal, was shot by a third officer. That suspect died yesterday. Officer Mora was just 27 years old. More crime and chaos in Biden's America. Look at this. Three major U.S. cities saw spikes in their homicide rates. Philadelphia saw over 60 more homicides in 2021 compared to 2020. Portland had 90 murders in 21, up by nearly 40 from 2020. And Louisville, Kentucky had nearly 20 more homicides in 21 over 2020. And the streets aren't getting any safer for police officers. 17 more cops were killed in 21 over 20. And it all adds up, folks. Overall, we saw nearly 1,300 more homicides in 2021 than 2020. Over 20,000 people killed thanks to liberal policies. But Joe Biden is now rethinking his stance on police in America. Why? Well, hopefully because people are being assaulted, raped, and murdered at record rates in cities across America. And he cares about that. That would be the right reason for pivoting away from a failing policy by a politician. But there's likely a more nefarious reason Biden and the Democrats are about facing on policing in America. It's not popular anymore. And these career politicians see the future. Their idiotic sucking up to the woke mobs of BLM and Antifa sounded good on paper. But when the woke glow wore off, criminals stepped into the vacuum and ran wild, robbing, looting, assaulting, and ultimately murdering innocent citizens at an alarming rate. And so politicians began being politicians again, flip-flopping, and are now pretending they were with us on the right all along. Take Jen Psaki. Please take Jen Psaki. Take Jen Psaki at the briefing yesterday when asked why Biden was suddenly trying to pretend he was on the side of law and order. Psaki tried to completely whitewash the asinine defund the police position her boss has held for the last 18 months. Gun violence is a huge reason for the surge in crime. Uh, underfunding of pol some police departments and their need for additional resources, something the president has advocated for consistently through the course of his career. Except, Jen Jen, we have that thing called the Google machine, and we can replay your boss's own words. Is that do we agree that we can redirect some of the funding? Yes, because we can say, if you don't, we are not going to provide the federal funding that we provide for you through what they call burn grants and cop grants. I support conditioning federal aid to police based on whether or not they meet certain basic standards of decency and honorableness. Mm. This is how it works with these lying, cheating, slime creatures in D.C. First, they say defund the police. Then they don't prosecute criminals. Then crime rates rise all over. Then they try to say they were tough on crime all along. And then we play proof of them lying. You know what? I get to be here to do the work. So suck it up and defunding the police has to happen. I will never stop saying not only do we need to disinvest for in police, but we need to completely dismantle the Minneapolis Police Department. Mm, mm, mm. And then when all of that fails, of course, what do they do? They go to their go to. They blame guns. Gun violence is a huge reason for the surge in crime. It's a resounding call to action. We have to do more to fight the scourge of illegal guns on our streets. Mm, of course, it's the guns' fault, right? Not the criminals holding the guns. It's the guns. They blame guns. Isn't that rich? These fools demanded we defund police departments. Big city mayors, all of whom are Democrats, defunded their police departments because woke liberals were demanding that. Then crime spikes in all their cities. Suddenly, taxpayers, who are also voters, demand their cities become safer. And the politicians demand more money for police departments. See the pattern? Then when caught lying, they try to split the baby by suggesting more funding, not for cops to do their jobs, not for more safety equipment, not for more backup. No, these liberal boneheads are saying we need more help, more money, assistance from the feds to help remove guns from the streets. That's their answer to everything crime-related. More gun control. What morons. 
This is another colossal waste of taxpayer dollars, and it won't stop the crime wave slicing its way through Main Street, USA. Before we move on, I want to show you a tweet from Black Lives Matter, and this will show you who wants the streets cleaned up and who's fine with lawlessness plaguing our communities. They wrote, this is their words, quote, let's not jump to conclusions. Let's wait till we have all the information. Isn't that what y'all tell us? Oh, yeah, and that he had a gun because cops carry guns. Will the media post a picture and list every mistake they've made since kindergarten? We want to bring in a friend of the show, Bo Deedle. He's a former New York City police detective, also a friend of mine personally. Bo, I, I, my heart goes out to you and the, and the NYPD family. Loss of yet another police officer. Tell us, tell us what's going on behind the scenes. Well, there's a couple of things, and I got some breaking news with uh, uh, our friend there, Bragg, the DA of Manhattan. I'm going to break it Alvin Bragg. on your show tonight. Well, first, my heart goes out to Wilbur Mora and also Jason Rivera, our two brothers that we lost. I'm retired 38 years, but it's like you lose a family member. Now, a lot of people don't know that Wilbur Mora was dead a long time ago, brain dead. But he, what he did was he gave all his organs so people could live. So he was saving people's lives, even with his own death. And my heart and soul goes out to those two officers and their families. They are really, truly two one tough cops, and my heart and soul goes out. Young kids. Yeah. Young kids, yeah. 22 one, and 20, 27. Yeah, right. and I tell you, here was the news. Yesterday, they had a crime commission phone call yesterday morning with, uh, with Mr. Bragg. Uh, what's his first Alvin name? Bragg. Alvin, Alvin Bragg. Alvin the, Bragg, the, the, yeah. the new Manhattan DA. Right, and I think we spoke about the last time I was on the show. He had, the, there was a DA that was on there, a good friend of mine. He used to be a district attorney in, in New York County. Uh, and he was talking to him. I was going to go on there. I was on hold. I was going to rip him apart like Bo would normally do. All of a sudden, he went at him. And Bragg did a 180. And he goes, I now take it all. I should have never released that memo. And it was wrong. And I own it. He goes, right now, you go into a store with a baseball bat, gun, knife, you do a robbery, you're going to be prosecuted as a felon. You resist arrest with a police officer making arrest, you will be prosecuted. He backed off everything. So I have to say... So, so clarify this yeah. with us, Bo. So he says this on a phone call with whom? Okay, you had this New York City uh, Citizens Crime Commission. Okay. And it's, it's all over the internet right now. He, did, he went back on everything he said, and I was, I was very, very proud. You know, that uh, it, it, Richard Aborn, he's the head of the New York City Citizens Crime Commission. Mm -hmm. He got him on the phone. I was one of the, the callers in on the Zoom, and I was going to go at him like I normally do, Eric, and he just answered all the questions, and he reversed himself. He said he owns it. He should have never sent that right. memo out. Let me let's talk a little bit about this. And it, 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 this officer, Officer Jason Rivera, who died the night of the shooting, yeah. the, the night of the ambush, because yeah. this guy, this this perp, came out, kicked the door open. The officers were it was a domestic disturbance call, right? So yeah. the, this guy comes out of the back. And the mother said he, did, he, he he didn't have a weapon. They asked him, "Does he have a weapon?" No. I don't think so. This, this, I mean, these idiots who say let's use community service workers yeah. to do these domestic calls are out of their mind. Here are two cops. Who are two cops? Anyway, Jason Rivera. Gets gunned down in Harlem. He, he's from Harlem. The the person, the 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 whoever this woman is who oversees the Harlem district, this council member has been an anti-police council person for for ages. A couple of weeks ago, she she tweeted that she she thought the NYPD was the biggest group of, of the biggest gang in America. Mm. And and also, Bragg comes right from that neighborhood. And Bragg talked about guns being pointed at. Bragg talked about homicide. His kids are around there, so these crimes are being committed around his own. Own house. Now, as far as that perpetrator, let's not even use his name, the piece of garbage. He had a 40 round barrel along with his other Glock. So he had over 50 rounds. They found a fully automatic AK 47 or AR 15 under his bed. He could have killed a lot more. We're very lucky we don't have three dead cops today. But right now, I think the wave is turning. Look at Milwaukee. They're up to 21 so, murders. So, Paul, now, I know your friend. You know Eric Adams, and because yeah. you and I are friends, we talk about it a little bit. But, you know, Eric Adams says he's going to be tough on crime, and he, all these things are happening. 20, 22 is starting out to be worse than 21, which is, is a bad thing. But Eric Adams, so far, we're, we're 409 on the East Coast right now. This, this second cop, uh, Wilbert Moore, just passed away within the last, I don't know, hour or so. 
Eric Adams hasn't hasn't made a statement on, well, on the, the loss of another cop. Well, well, that's that I don't know about. All I know is one thing: he came out with a a a, a direction this morning, and he came out with a direction bringing back the anti-crime finally. So I want back, to ask you about. Yeah, that. great, right? Sounds good, on paper. Can they stop and frisk though? Well, that's got to be part of it. And to be very honest with you. There's a guy named Phil Banks, who's now his top deputy mayor of public safety, one of the smartest. He ran the police department before. I'm pretty much in constant contact with him. He sees it. He understands it. And I believe Eric Adams will go and do what he has to do. Look at this is the wave. You just showed all these cities. New York City is the capital of the world. If we go down, Eric Adams is going to go down. He was elected for law and order. He's got to follow through. I think we see with Bragg. The overwhelming public response to Bragg's original letter has been wiped out. Now, people realize we need law enforcement. This is, uh, I got about half a minute or so, but this is, this is just the, the, the comeuppance of eight years of that idiot, the other guy, yeah. the, the, uh, the, de Blasio, coming to fruition. Eric Adams has only been in office a couple of weeks. Now, can he turn this place around? I, I really believe he can. And you know what I said, Eric? And I told him to his face. I said, New York City needs a hero. New York City needs someone that guide us out of this. The homeless, the mentally ill, you have so many situations. Let's give him a chance, Eric. I'll be coming back on your show. Let's see what he does. But I believe he knows what he has to do. He has the capability to do it. He's in great shape. He don't sleep till 11. He's up right. bright and early and he's going. Right. Bo Deedle, everyone. Bring, let's bring Eric Adams back next time, too. I'd love that? to bring him on the show. All right. Bo, thank you for being thank here. You.